Hey everybody, at BV Matson here. I want to do a long form video of a short that I put out. Um, it was about adjusting the floats on a carburetor. So let's get to it. All right, so what we've got going on here, we got this carburetor and we do have the float bowl off. All right, float bowl is off. And here is the adjustment that we're looking at. We are looking at the float height. All right, and the float height is controlled at the access right in there. Let's get a closer look at what's going on here. All right, so what we're looking at here is the float and the carburetor's upside down right now, just pay attention to that. But what we're really looking to adjust is right down in here. It's really hard to show you, it's very small. But it's right in here and there is a small spring valve here. All right, and this needs to be adjusted. On this particular carb, it's 26 millimeter. Uh, this is a CB350 that we're working on. Um, but yours are gonna vary, so you're gonna need to look in the manual. But what you wanna do, let's take a closer look at this valve. All right, this is your float needle valve. The most important part on this is this little springy piece on the end. That valve actually lives underneath the float and on the float there is a small indent right here all right and that is what you adjust to get your float height correct you can see this little tab right here goes up and down it's right in the middle of this thing will go up and down and that's where you make those adjustments now additionally this is where that little needle valve lives, okay? The needle valve goes point, point down, sharp point down into the carburetor right here. And that's where that little springy thing lives and that is where your float bowl slides into and it's gonna rock and roll right there, okay? There's a little pin that I took out earlier that holds that float bowl in, so. That's the adjustment we need to make, and here's how you do it. All right, I'm gonna sh do my best here to show you what to do, and the mistake I talked about in the short was that people will adjust their float height, which this is 26, so let's just roughly get over to 26. Close, all right, for now, let's go. Um, what, we, what we're looking to get is a measurement from the base here on the carb to the top of the float, all right? That's the measurement you're trying to get. And if you're looking at it vertically like this, there's just a little bit of weight that can close that valve and you can be off one or two millimeters. So what you really wanna be doing is looking at it this way. Look at it from the side, hold it up in the air, like I'm trying to film this, but you wanna just get this thing nice and loose and kind of flopping around. And then what you do is you just tilt it and you get a good light source behind here that you can see that little flipper. And you're gonna just get it just right. Let me get this. So I'm just gonna be tilting it until I can see right inside of there. And that's where I'm going to take my initial measurement. So on this one, I'm like way, way high, like way high. Um, that thing has to come down a hot minute because I'm not even close to 26. All right, since you're probably going to have to make an adjustment, and this one definitely does it super high, there's just a pin uh, inside of here, and you can just grab a screwdriver or something. Push that pin out, and then a little pair of needle nose come in real handy. Just grab that, if I could grab it. Pull that out, and your float's going to come out. And then what you're going to look at is that tab. So on my tab, my tab needs to go down because I need these floats coming down. So I'm gonna give this one a good push in. All right, just like that. And then you're gonna go back on. You're gonna throw these back on. And I should have said, don't lose that pin because you're gonna need the pin. There it is. And then we just go ahead, put this back together here. All right, there we go, it's back in. And now, 
what we can do is do the same thing. So let's elevate a little bit. Let's rock this carburetor back and forth till it just hits. Now you can see, look how close I am on 26. Like It's so close, like it's really close. I'll dial that in, but for video making sake, that's pretty good, right? But that's the method. You might have to do it 15, 20 different times. But um, yeah, it can be done. And that's the gist. Get it right to, on this one is 26. So you wanna get there because this thing's gonna hang like this. The gas is gonna push and close that valve at that perfect, perfect moment. It's really what's going on is it hangs like this. Gas comes into the bottom of the bowl. And I'll shut that valve off, so. Be specific on that. One other thing to remember, and I keep neglecting to say it, is that you wanna measure it. So if we're gonna be measuring this, we're gonna go like this, we're gonna go 26, we're gonna measure out you know, to that drop down point on that valve. And then we're also, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the other one as well, okay? So don't forget to do the same kind of process for both sides, both of them have to be right on. If you have to, you can take it and like torque the floats just a little bit. Like if one is higher than the other, you can torque it down, but just make sure that both sides are at that right space. So measure both sides. All right, that was the detail that I missed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's been working for me. Ever since I started doing carburetors that way, things were going way better. Didn't have to take them off again, make all these adjustments. So. Good stuff. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, hit that alert bell, do all the things. <laughs> if you have some tips or suggestions, also hit me up in the comments on that. But uh, yeah, um, I wanted to do a longer form on that. There it is. All right, we'll see you in the next video or live stream or short.